the possibility of Bill Belichick landing in Jacksonville, Florida. I like the, the uh, Jags. The, that map quest up there. Or does map quest even well, exist we, anymore? We promised you to show you Florida? a map of of where Jupiter is in relation to Jacksonville. It's a bit of a drive, four hour drive, two hundred and seventy miles. That's without the that's without the benefit of private aviation, though. That is correct. That is without private aviation. Or you could also uh, just take the boat up north. Yep. Put it in a marina. Yeah, fun there. ride. Or, or if you go to Jacksonville, you could, with the kind of means that Bill Belichick has, you could just buy a nice place in Jacksonville as well, and you get all the same benefits of the weather of Jupiter while in Jacksonville. And the tax benefits. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like all that oh, comes yeah. with yeah. it. I mean, I don't know that you need to start running to Jupiter if, you have a play, if you're in Jacksonville. I mean, I think it sets up as a pretty good situation for him, though. Because if you look at it, so all the way around, right? The owner's one of the wealthiest owners in all of sports. He has resources. There isn't going to be like this massive media pressure there that there is in the Northeast. There's none. Pressure. How right. many people cover the team? Yeah. Four. So there's that. Okay. On top of that, the owner doesn't even live in Jacksonville. The owner's sort of absentee. So he's not, while he'll support you, he's not around a lot. And so what the football people who've been um, – one of the reasons there's been organizational chaos there in the past is because without somebody to officiate problems, like when things go bad and you don't have an owner in the building day-to-day, -day, well, now all of a sudden it becomes Game of Thrones, right? Like, And that's happened there before, but that's because they've oftentimes split up the power, right? So if you have one guy who's in charge and you say, like, okay, Bill, it's your show, that guy's not going to have the owner – like up as you know what, like five days a week, he's going to be able to just do his job because the owner is living in St. Louis. I just, I think there's that. Then there's the quarterback. That's the there, problem. Huh? You know, St. Louis. You think the problem? I do think it's a problem, yeah. I But don't you look at, like, Trevor kind of like, you can make it happen with him. Well, I think you can make it happen with him, but I think Bill goes in there, Bill looks at the dollar that you're paying, paying the quarterback. Right. Like, he wouldn't go above 25 with Brady. He's going to look at that contract and say, "This guy." I hadn't thought about the contract. That interception the other day, Burt was so bad. bad. Yeah, bad. But I mean, like, if you think you can get again, he's. Still, I mean, he's stuck with him. That's he's all. still like he's not super, going anywhere. And, and look, like I, I was wrong about him. Like I, I bought into it, and like I, like he's he's a good player. He's not what we all thought he yeah. was going to be. Like we all thought, like by now, based on his reputation coming out of Clemson, we should be talking about him with Mahomes and Allen and Burrow and all those other. He should guys. look like Burrow, right? And so, do you think you can get that out of him? That's part of the evaluation. I hadn't thought about the contract part of it. That's a good point, but I I do think like there's there's a baseline there where I think a priority for Bill would be: Am I going to be able to do it my way? Am I going to have an owner who's going to interfere? Am I going to be able to? manage everything within the building and i do think like jacksonville would be a place where it would be kind of like hey here's your blank canvas bill do whatever you want and i i think back to bill parcells getting the job in dallas and part of the reason and part of the reason why the joneses did it was because they had been sufficiently embarrassed by what happened during the dave campo era and they were in a position where it's like okay we we're trying to get a new stadium built. We need to reestablish our credibility. This has gone too far. Big Bill, here's the keys. You got it. Like, you turn us around. And he did, right? Like, I think the basis of what the Cowboys have become the last 15 years was built by Bill Parcells. I think Jacksonville could look at it the same way. Here are the keys, Bill. You take it over. You can do whatever you want. We got a new stadium going up. We got to sell suites. We got to sell sponsorships. We got to sell all this different stuff. It's your show. Reestablish our credibility. I think that that's one of the best things that Bill does for you, right, is that he can reestablish credibility sure. for an organization like that. And I this. think you could bring Josh in and say, hey, Josh, fix the kid. Right. He probably does. Yeah. I think Josh would be able to work with Trevor. I think Josh would be able to make that work. And then, you know, like, again. So it's can... not going to be a Patricia Judge thing. It's going to uh, be a no. Josh yeah. McDaniels thing. Just check. Guess, yeah. Good. Good. I mean, okay. When was Mac his best? With All Josh. Right. Like, yeah. Plus, you got Mac Jones there. <laughs> yeah, he's probably going to have to go. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, went to change that. Yeah. Hi, Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mac, this, is, uh, it's not, this isn't working out here. Yeah. So you think the fact that it's a hands-off owner makes, and an ownership group that he's friendly with makes it enticing for him? 
Yeah, I think so. First and foremost, that's the thing you Where live Where does he with. live? Yeah, you have to manage the sun a little St. Louis, he said. Yeah, oh, the, wow. owner, the owner lives in St. Louis. Huh. So, of all the places. Yeah, well, that's where, parts, like, like, that's, that's where he's from. That's, that's where the where business from. is yeah. based? Yeah. yeah. It's car parts that he, he's yeah. into, right? Yeah, like it's, uh, what was the name of it? Callahan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zelensky. I actually Zelensky. think of the same thing yeah. when people bring out auto parts. Is big, it's was uh, Big Tom Callahan. Yeah, Big Tom Callahan. Big Tom Callahan, yeah. Yeah. And then his his son, Tommy. Tommy Boy. Flexen Gate was his That's company. Right, yeah. Auto parts supplier. Oh. Huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Self made, like, good story. Like, first generation guy, you know, grew up in St. Louis, I believe, or either grew up, was he, did, I know he was born in Pakistan, but I believe he grew up. Part of his childhood was in St. Louis, and then, yeah, went to the University of Illinois. And so he's always been in that area. Well, he actually moved to the U.S. at the age of 16 to study at the University of okay, Illinois. Okay, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he went to the University of Illinois and then. Put up, put down roots in St. Louis. Yep. His first night um, when he moved to the United States was a two dollar a night room at the YMCA at the University of Illinois. That's his first that. job was washing dishes for a dollar twenty an hour. Yep. And he was in a fraternity there, and that's what Wikipedia tells me. Yep. yep there you go. Flexingate. I don't know much about that, but I know that it's auto parts, and he's it, made the a lot guy, of money. I got a guy making that much. Probably tells you flexing gate is probably somewhere on your car. Oh, it's good. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's probably somewhere on your Sounds car. Sounds like flex hill. Like you're clogging holes or something. <laughs> flexing gate. Yeah, cool. They produce the, according to their website, they produce the highest quality products and systems for the automotive industry. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like they make all kinds of stuff for like bumpers and the, you know how they always show you the assembly line? Yeah. Well, those parts have to come from somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's go to Steve. He's in Boston today. Steve. Hey, guys. I uh, was just wondering, based on the uh, reports that Kraft and Jones are competing for everything, wouldn't it be delicious if Jones fired uh, McCarthy midseason, hired Bill on Kraft's dime, and then uh, Kraft turned that around quickly and made them the winner that they should be based on their roster? Um, I, I've heard people bring up this idea of like a mid season. When has that happened before? That's not him. It's not going to happen. No, it's not him. Like, get that out of your head. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, no one's going to fire a coach in mid season and then just like hire a guy in November. It just doesn't like, I, even I can't Jerry, think, even Jerry maybe, wouldn't do that. Maybe it's happened before. Like, and I think it's happened like where they brought in, um, like they've, Maybe brought in like some sort of stopgap, but it wouldn't be someone like Bill. I don't think there's any history of that at all. To make a major sort of hiring like that right. after firing a guy, yeah. yeah. Plus, I wouldn't want that if I were a coach no. who was coming in to actually do the job. Who right. wants to take over that mid midway? You don't pick want it up weeks. No, you want to no. get yeah. in and set up the yeah. proper way. Get to a game plan. Mike's in Connecticut. Hey, Mike. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. So uh, over the first three games, there's been one one person on offense that stuck out in each game. Week one was Mondre. Week two was Hunter Henry. Week three was Pop. Do you think that's a uh, Alex Van Pell thing, or do you think that's a Jacoby Brissett thing, just targeting one one guy on offense? Well, I thought Gibson popped uh, week two. Yeah, he looked good. He looked good against Seattle. I mean, I don't know if they've been overwhelmingly towards. I mean, obviously, Ramondre is going to be the cent- center of the running game, and when they lean heavy on the run game, you're going to see more of it. Um, I I think against Seattle, a lot of it was the blitz stuff, and you know, Hunter Henry was an outlet for Jacoby, right? Like he had a really those, good game. Yeah, in those in those situations, like when you are escaping, like your tight end is generally going to be your outlet, and yeah, there was a little bit of an effort to get the ball to pop. I thought on on Thursday night. Um, and that worked out for them. Um, I, <laughs> I guess as much as anything could, get, could, could work out for you in a situation where you're getting beat down the way they got beat down. Hey, if you like that clip, check out more videos from Zolak and Bertrand right here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.